When we initially heard that there was a teenager who had been diagnosed with coronavirus, I think a lot of parents were thinking one thing, where did he go to school? Many of you were wondering if, if school districts are indeed prepared if the virus becomes more widespread. Atlanta Public School Superintendent Dr. Maria Kastarfin is with us, and thanks for being with us. We really appreciate you being here at uh, 11 Alive on this Friday. Uh, what procedures are in place at this point as, as you prepare here if a student or a staff member tests positive at APS? Yeah, the first thing to remember is that we are not the medical experts. And so we will be looking to the Department of Health, the CDC, um, the U.S., the Georgia Department of Education, and any federal guidance um, that that is expected for us to um, follow uh, should there be an outbreak in a school or in the district. And so we also want to be sure that we verify that it's the coronavirus so that we don't, you know, unnecessarily alarm people. And then once we know that, we will be getting guidance from them. So the Department of Health is a key partner in that, uh, making sure that we're analyzing that information correctly and, um, and ensuring that we don't, you know, cause an alarm when we don't need to. So today we saw one of the first major universities in the United States cancel all in-person classes and hold exams strictly online. That's at the University of Washington where there have been cases in that state. So what capability does APS have for students to work at home if it eventually comes to that? The hope, the wish, the dream, the desire is that doesn't happen, but Absolutely. the way this is evolving, one certainly can't tell from day to day. Right, so uh, so we're gonna lean hard on our emergency system that we use uh, on when we close school for bad weather days. Yeah. And so, uh, so we've tested it and it allows us to uh, provide what we call teleschooling to students. Um, they're able to go in through the internet and Wi-Fi and whatever uh, you know they may have um, as devices to see all of their expectations around academics. Uh, and before kids leave, especially if we know that it's happening, uh, we'll be able to hand off to them other instructional materials, uh, books and supplies as needed, uh, which so long as it's allowable through uh, the CDC guidance. So we'll be using our longstanding practice of, uh, of those technological systems in preparation for uh, for the potential for the virus to uh, have schools or the district closed. So I think many people might be wondering what happens to those students who rely on school for a meal each day mm -hmm. or those who get free or reduced lunch because they don't have enough to eat. Is, is there a plan in place for them as well? Yeah, so we serve about 70,000 pounds of food a day. Mm -hmm. um, anywhere from 67,000 kids uh, will end up getting, or 67,000 meals will be served to kids every single day. Um, and uh, that means that uh, we are kind kind of the food provider for a child and their family. Uh, so we're teaming up with an organization called Gooder. Uh, they will have already started to work on a memorandum of understanding with our district. They'll be able to take our food and take it to sites where it can then be distributed. And uh, so we think that it's going to uh, allow us to certainly have uh, our kids get access to food when we won't have schools open. We have seconds left. Am I missing anything? Anything else you want to get out as far as the message um, goes? Well, I mean, I think that uh, there is the, the issue of um, disinfecting, uh, yeah. of course. Uh, we're using all of the guidance from the CDC. Uh, whether you're a contractor or a staff member, you're expected to use the approved, uh, the approved cleaners. And so I just want to remind everyone that cleaning stainless steel and hard surfaces like plastic is key. Washing your hands. And if you cough, cough in a tissue and throw it away. Uh, those are the best ways to kind of protect. And, um, and of course, washing your hands at least 20 seconds when you're washing is a great way to prevent the spread. An elbow. Well, you know, yeah, to. they even tell you don't cough in your elbow. Get that <laughs> tissue, cough in it, and throw it away. So um, those are all important things to do uh, to protect and prevent. But most importantly, if we do have to send kids home, uh, to please be patient and not overreact until we know that we actually have a crisis. Dr. Maria Kastarfin, always great to have you here. Thanks for all the great work that you've done in this city and for APS, the important work. I know there are thousands of parents that are greatly appreciative of your time here in our city. Thank you so much, Jeff. We appreciate your support. Okay.